Hello and happy Friday. I am Meredith. I am here with our message for the 23rd of February, 2024. We're using This Might Hurt Tarot for our message today. Uh, we've had quite the shuffle. As you can see, we've got a lot of cards, uh, which is great. What, what's going on in the environment though? We've got the sun in Pisces, the moon is in Leo, though it is shifting signs into Virgo much later today. So too is Mercury shifting. It's going to move out of Aquarius and into Pisces. And then on Saturday, we have a full moon in Virgo. Yeah, there's a lot going on out there. So what do the cards have to say for us about uh, this weekend? What's going on in the energy atmosphere? First two cards together, we've got the Hermit. Ooh, nice. Taking a deep look into the subconscious with the hermit's lantern i like this you know we saw in yesterday's reading we had the ten of cups the four of wands we had a whole host of major arcana coming off the bottom of the deck which included the wheel of fortune judgment the tower i think was there the lovers hmm there was a lot going on so i'm not surprised to see the hermit here and the core message on the hermit card is a quest beckons and that quest is us taking a look into our subconscious uh, purposely with <laughs> determination to see what can be seen so that we can continue to grow in this beautiful environment of manifestation that we've had for so many weeks. Well, for months actually, though it's been building uh, quite exquisitely in recent weeks. So we're going to take a look at anything that could potentially be an old story that holds us back. You know, we saw in yesterday's reading that Nine of Pentacles, we were talking about self-sovereignty and an incredible uh, self-relationship. And it's in the strength of that self-relationship that we can even pick this lantern up and decide to take a look at our subconscious on purpose. <laughs> They're no, it's not happening by accident here is what I'm feeling. And this is paired with, sweet, the Nine of Wands. See, this is very deliberate as I see these two cards. And take a look at this artwork. You know, this is a person who's got the books cracked. Um, they're journaling even. They are bringing their endurance and fortitude for their spiritual journey on this card to anything that would benefit from our deep inner strength. So that's what we're up to. It's why we pick up the lantern and go on a quest into the deep dark of our own subconscious because we're strong enough, one, to do it. Two, we, we know that it's going to take our existing knowledge and experience to turn over anything that stands in our way from really living in the fulfillment of that Ten of Cups, Four of Wands that we saw yesterday. So it's it's a worthwhile endeavor in the energy atmosphere is supporting our deeper look. And then there's the Magician. Excellent card because what are we doing? We're bringing heaven to earth. This is as above, so below. This is why we want to take a look at the subconscious and anything that requires an upgrade, an up level in our own frequency because we're making magic. We're, we're the bringer of miracles to our own foundation. And if something has to be cleared out of the path, it's going to take our strength, our fortitude, and our endurance to clear it. Though we've got that in spades, don't we? We have that to the nth degree. Love it. Then, oh, Ace of Cups right smack in the middle of the reading. This is love, bliss, joy, happiness on overflow because it's an ace. It's a divine and cosmic gift. That's why the look into the subconscious, the inner quest on the spiritual journey is so fruitful for us because it produces the gift and the blessing of this overflow. The Ace of Cups is emotional fulfillment beyond all reason, right? This is why we get so excited when we see the Ten of Cups, or at least why I do. Uh, and we had that in yesterday's reading. So we're talking about living in this lifestyle of the Ten of Cups, Ace of Cups to the power of 10 with this kind of overflow. 
why wouldn't we want to rock, be a rock star in that scenario? So of course, we're going to take a look into our own shadowy depths to say, hey, you know what, what's next? I'm willing to take a look at it. You know, we also had the tower off the bottom of the deck yesterday too. Kind of, it wasn't necessarily meant to be part of the reading in the sense that I was kind of done pulling cards off the bottom, but when I turned it over and I saw the next two cards sitting there, I couldn't help but bring it out because we had mentioned it. So it's a light essence of the tower and you can see it at work here because we have this nine of wands. We're willing to do what it takes to bring our dreams to life. And here's this beautiful overflowing ace of cups sitting next to the magician, which is about as above, so below. And an ace is always a divine and cosmic gift. This is quite literally a snapshot of the universe blessing us with these two cards because we're over here willing to take a look at what the ego might be chattering about and bring some harmony, some love, compassionate understanding. Excellent, right? Oh, gosh. Followed by the Empress. This is one of the phenomenons that happens on this tarot table quite often. When you see the Ace of Cups, the Empress <laughs> shows up. And what I like about this is because she is the mother of tarot. She is the bringer of life. Uh, she is the divine feminine energy within tarot. And sitting next to an overflow of the Ace of Cups, what you're seeing is the water breaks, the dam breaks, and we bring to life on our foundation all of our dreams, our visions, intentions, everything that we have spent our energy on manifesting. You're watching it happen. You're watching it get delivered. The Empress is also a message of cycles and rhythms. So check that out for yourself too. You may be in a nine day, nine week, nine month cycle. Uh, and I'm sensing uh, we should take a look back at eclipse season here. And I know that we saw the Eight of Cups this week too. I think it was earlier in the week. So check your manifestation goals if you were journaling about them back in the fall see what has come to pass from then to now you might be quite surprised and I'm still sensing the surprise the delight the awe the wonder that is coming off the magician the ace of cups and the empress all working together because we've been in divine alignment over here with the hermit and the nine of wands doing our spiritual journey work. Last two cards, main body of the reading. First is the devil. <laughs> Excellent. With <laughs> the nine of swords. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> you know, and this is really what we're dealing with over here with the, the hermit and the nine of wands. We are quite literally taking a look at repetitive thoughts, attitudes, and behaviors, which is what the devil card is all about, so that we can see what we're doing in belief system, programming, ego chatter, all of that stuff that causes us this kind of personal strife. I am certain every single one of you could name in three seconds or less one event that's going on in your world right now, usually connected to other people, that is causing this kind of situation, right? The devilish thoughts that bring anxiety, restlessness, sleeplessness. These two together do not look like us preserving our peace, which is what we were talking about in yesterday's reading. However, when you bring the hermit and the nine of wands to this situation, this is us on the Hermit's card, questing, boldly so, into the deep dark of our own ego mind chatter, right? And doing the work that's required to alleviate this Nine of Swords situation. So I see these two cards as a success story based on the first two cards and everything that's in the middle. It's like a how-to manual here. How do I create the Magician, Ace of Cups, Empress? 
Well, you go to the hermit and then you take care of what the hermit reveals. And in so doing, you bring harmony, love, bliss, joy, and happiness to any old anxious ego mind chatter that becomes a stumbling block. Pretty fantastic, right? It's a formula that we use over and over and over again when we are interested in living our very best experience on our foundation. And that's coming out of the overflow here, the magic, the miracle of the divine and cosmic gift of the Ace of Cups coming to life on our foundation. Amazing. Bottom of the deck, what are we not so aware of? <laughs> nice. Nine of Cups. We got three nines in the reading at the moment. You know, nines are bringing us close to fulfillment as well. So we're closer than we realize. This is the wish card, the dream come true card in tarot. And it's because you have deliberately chosen to put some effort into the hermit by looking into the subconscious and dealing with lovingly, compassionately what's there to alleviate this kind of energy atmosphere that could erupt from not tending our self-relationship. This is very sweet. Next, Ten of Wands. What a great ten to have. You know, this is the one that's called the Burden card. And yeah, the load looks very heavy, doesn't it? When you look at the artwork. However, that's the Ace of Wands to the power of 10. That's an incredible amount of resource. And that's what it takes, doesn't it? The divine energetic resource to create our Nine of Cups, which is representative of our vision, our dream, our goal, where we intend to be, how we choose to live on our foundation. It takes this kind of resource, and I think that's potentially why we saw a bit of the tower yesterday, too, because that tower comes down because it can't serve the frequency in which you now exist. So you need to do some remodeling, and you have everything you could possibly require to make that happen. By following your intuition, listening to that inner voice, there's the high priestess. What an amazing card to have. You know, and that's a message we've had on repeat for months and months and months. Listen to your intuition. Look for a sign. We get those messages a lot. And when we bravely, boldly let go of whatever ego mind chatter would keep us from following through on the energy of what we receive intuitively, when we overcome that, we, we create this magic. We literally do bring heaven to earth for ourselves. So these cards are showing you the lineup that all the change we've talked about in recent weeks and transformation is coming to a head in a way. So we're being prepared to make way while simultaneously letting go. What are we making way for? Everything the Ace of Cups will bring us. Everything that we've been dreaming awake into this reality, right? The magic, the miracle, all of it. And what has to go? Anything that is not of a like frequency. What happens when we let go? We have a whole lot of resource to draw upon in that Ten of Wands to build, to flourish, to thrive. <laughs> there it is again. There's the tower. How fantastic is that? Right? I don't need to explain it again, do I? One more off the bottom of the deck. We've got... <laughs> the six of wands perfect card okay so for those of you that got a little bit scared when you saw the devil the nine of swords <laughs> or even the hermit in the nine of wands and then the tower added to the mix here comes the success the thriving energy the fertile verdant energy off the six of wands because this is home coming to our own heart space this is our heart space alive and thriving on our foundation. You're watching it happen in the Nine of Cups. You have all the resource for it. You continue to follow your intuition and take a look at the tower and everything within the debris field of the tower. You keep what works. You let go of what doesn't and you create an amazing foundation of happiness. Beautiful. All right, Angel Answers. If you have a question, a query, looking for a confirmation, let these cards bring that for you. Right, 
cards on the floor. First one coming out though. Perfect timing, that's divine timing. That connects us to the temperance card that we saw yesterday as well. This is a message, a further message of allowing. Let the universe surprise and delight you with a number of opportunities that fall at your feet. This card literally fell at my feet. <laughs> yeah, it's all happening in divine order, which makes letting go a whole lot easier. And then the simple fact that you're ready for everything that we see here and so much more. It's great reassurance, isn't it? <laughs> this one was turned over upside down on me. Listen to your intuition. Just to confirm the High Priestess one more time. All right, one final card out of Angel Answers. If you believe, great card. What do you believe? And does it serve you? Great question. Another great question, how good can this get? <laughs> Leave some comments, let us know. All right, final word on the reading. Angels and Ancestors, how is our soulful presence informing our waking consciousness? Seriously, this one again. The seer. See beyond the current situation. Yeah. See the whole picture come into life in just the way you dream it, and then make way for more surprise and more delight because undoubtedly it will be there. Have a beautiful weekend, everyone. Enjoy the full moon tomorrow. Full moon in Virgo. <laughs> Peace, love, joy, happiness. Namaste.